<laughs> so um, I had the, the honor and privilege of being at the very small table in Jack's office with Bill Miller about four years ago when the term geodesign was coined, maybe getting my chronology slightly wrong. And from a glimmer in our eye, um, I'm really just very pleased to, to see the progress that's already been made in, in four years, starting with a, a bunch of small prototypes. And I wanted to just go over the what I think is the key idea that, that we started with and re-raise the issue of are we there yet and is this the right starting idea. Uh, we, we basically um, came at this from the point of view of why aren't more landscape architects, why aren't more designers, why aren't more architects using GIS to inform their design decisions. And doing that humbly and saying, what is it that these people know and their working methods that, that we don't know and haven't applied in GIS? And one of the first things we came up with through observation is sketching. And the notion that if you look at what separates designers, using the term loosely, from, from other types of analytic tasks, the notion of generating many ideas and then being ruthless about filtering them out is one of the operating creative characteristics of design. And we felt that uh, GIS at the time was not supporting that well. And um, we came up with a notion of geospatial design, or now geodesign, that, that I would define basically as a design and planning method which tightly couples the creation of design proposals with impact simulations informed by geographic context. So that's, that's the tightest I could get in a sentence. Um, and the, the focus really was on all of these pieces, the tight coupling, the impact simulation, and the geographic context. And I think we've seen some, some good examples this morning of how pieces that might work. So uh, as some of the earlier speakers, we, we noticed disciplinary and professional divisions separating design from evaluation, design from construction, or from facilities management, and felt that that led to a, a lack of information flow back to design, to bad design, or important conditions considerations being ignored, and to slow and expensive workflows from basically the long deferred evaluations. You build the project and then you figure out that channelizing the river isn't a great idea. And so um, an initial uh, kind of use case was how do you build a green neighborhood and how do you know that you're building a green neighborhood? Similar to the, the ideas really from the 60s uh, of integration of science, um, we, we knew that we wanted to be able to bring scientific information, also regulatory information. And we knew that this information was needed basically the sooner the better. So we wanted basic screening and vulnerability models, which we feel are often sufficient for preliminary design. And we asked, why waste time considering infeasible options? And the summary of this is in uh, this diagram, which basically set, sets up the, the pieces that we are thinking of. The idea was, first of all, to separate technically the, uh, the idea of sketching from the idea of evaluation, and yet to bring back the results of impact modeling into the design environment here called sketch client. And rather than to consider this as a pipeline flowing just one way once, to really concentrate on the bottom half of the diagram in terms of in-design feedback, the possibility for external reviews, the thought process that the designer is going through when laying down a single polygon or doing a policy decision, and essentially using as a metric the cycle time. How many times can you get through this and get valuable, useful feedback? So the mantra was design it anywhere, evaluate everywhere, feedback quickly. And that was really the, the initial conceptual idea and, and uh, still one that I think has some traction and a little bit of room left to go.